Uh, I want to finish up by talking about growth, taking this idea into growth. If this is the same equation as in biology. What come, I'm going to use the same framework. What comes in goes to maintain what's there. What's there. It's all the salaries of people and all the rest of the stuff. We don't have time to go into this. Plus growth, expanding. So there it is, and there's an equation, which you don't have to look at, but you get the idea. And you can do the same. You can solve that equation. I'm not going to, you don't have to understand this. But this is a remarkable equation because it's simple, and it has built into it something extraordinary. The first thing is, forget about the hieroglyphics. Here's the thing. That number beta, see that Greek beta, that's that exponent, the three quarters, the quarters in biology, the 1.15 in, in uh, companies and uh, in uh, cities. If it's three quarters, less than one, what you end up with is that. You saw that. Nice, grow, stable, and so on. Of course, if this were a company or a city or an economy, which this could apply to, this would be terrible in our paradigm because it stops growing very bad. But if you go back to this equation and you put beta e bigger than 1, this changes to this, just what you want on the left. You grow beautifully. In fact, you grow faster than exponentially, and we have lots of data fitting to various things, which I won't bore you with. However, this equation is also remarkable because it has built into it something that is frightening. It has built into it something that Math mathematicians call a finite time singularity. And here, let me go back to this. No, let me go to this. You see that dotted line on the left? That dotted line is when the population, or whatever it is you're measuring the scale of the uh, corporation or city is, when it goes to infinity, which is obviously nuts. It doesn't. And what actually happens, of course, is somewhere along the line, you're going to run out of resources, and the theory tells you what happens. It tells you it goes to the right-hand side. You, you stabilize and collapse. Now, that's, the question is, how do you get around this? And how have we got around it? So we got around it in the following way. We start out like this, and we would go to infinity, which is nuts. Now you have to understand something. I'm going to finish with this. You have to understand something. When you have a economy or a city, and it's growing, it does it within a given cultural paradigm that's to do with a major innovation, like coal or oil or the thing. Brian, no doubt, has talked about this in his thing. There's a major innovation. Now, it would have been 20 years ago computers. Now it's IT. But something completely kind of resets the clock. So this is the language. You start growing. As you're approaching that singularity, you must innovate. You must make a major innovation and start again, OK? And so on. But you would hit another finite time singularity, so you have to do it again. So this is kind of a theorem that if you want continuous growth, it's what you all believe, I think, you have to have continuous innovation, a major innovation. Actually, that's not what the theory says. The theory does say that, but it says something frightening. It says, go back to that. You do do this. But those points get closer and closer together in a systematic way. So something that may have taken 1,000 years to develop 10,000 years ago now takes 20 years to develop systematically. That's what the formula says. And next time, it's going to take 15 and 10 and 5, and this is not sustainable. This system is destined to collapse. So here's the summary, and I'll finish. Innovation of wealth creation dominate social organizations. They have this mysterious 1.15, which we will one day calculate, I hope. There's a systematic increase necessarily in the pace of life, leading to unbounded growth with the potential of collapse. You have this finite time singularity that you can only avoid by continuously innovating, but there is this continuous tension always at the background between innovation of wealth creation versus economy of scales. And that is the Achilles heel of corporations, not of cities. And is this sustainable? My own view is it isn't, but that's uh, to be debated. And I just want to finish off by showing some pictures of cities, because I think it is the major issue, cities, and the role of corporations in them. We have energy. We create these kinds. This is where it comes from. This is what we want, all these goodies. 
and this culture. We want iPads and uh, culture and music and good restaurants, a booming economy, but coming necessarily along with it. It's basically the second law of thermodynamics. If you eat, you have to go to the bathroom eventually. There's no way out. No way. <laughs> so inevitably, it leads to this, 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 to the same degree. And the question is, no doubt this was discussed yesterday, is this what we're heading for or this? And finally, I said this already, none of these are independent. We need a new, well, I do want to say that. That's my own view. We really need to have a kind of a billion dollar project finding an integrated, quantitative, predictive paradigm for all of this. And I want to leave you with this one image, and I will finish here. You sitting there, so I just spaced out, waiting for me to finish. You operate, if you look carefully at that graph, oh, it's Peter. If you look uh, uh, at that graph, I showed you a metabolic rate. You operate, just spaced out here at about 100 watts. You're a light bulb. That's the 2,000 food calories a day. It's just a light bulb. We are extraordinarily efficient. If you add in your activity, it goes to about 200, 250. So when we, 10,000 years ago, you used about 250 watts. Now you ask yourself, what is your social metabolic rate? How much energy do you need to sustain you now, here? You need 11,000 watts. And you can look at that curve and ask, how big an animal are you actually? Instead of being 150 pounds, what are you? There it is. You're actually, each one of us in this room is a 30,000 kilogram, a 60,000 pound bigger than a blue whale. And that's the problem. How are we going to deal with that? So I finished there with, and I'm sorry, but I just wanted to give you some impressionistic view of thinking in terms of size and scale and what it leads to, and in particular, trying to have a serious theory of cities and companies. And we cannot, and this is my last statement, I believe <laughs> we are in deep doo-doo if we don't develop a serious theory integrating all of these things if we're going to keep a sustainable situation and have the kinds of things we want without growth. OK, sorry, I'm finished. That was a wonderful talk. Thank, Thank you. you so much.